things like this while you're going to it. Now when the time of Herod, the king, stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. He killed James the brother John and with the sword, and saw it pleased the Jews, so he proceeded further to take Peter also uh, there the days of the unleavened bread during the Jewish feast. And he said, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison, delivered him uh, to four quaternions and the Bible soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. And Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made for him. Somebody say prayer. Prayer. It was made for him without ceasing of the church unto God. Verse 6 says, And Herod would have brought him forth the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. The keeper before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came unto him, and light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and said, Raise up saying, Arise quickly, and, and his chains fell from his hands. Mm -hmm. The angel said unto him, Guard thyself, and bind on thy sandals, or put it on. And so he did, and he said unto him, Cast away the garment about thee, and follow me. And he went on and followed him, and wist not it was true, or was it an angel, or was this really a vision? Verse 10, and they were past the first gate and the second ward, and they came unto an iron gate and lead it unto the city and opened to them to his own accord. And he went out and passed through onto one street, and for the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know for sure the Lord has sent his angel and delivered me. Would you do me a favor? Look at your neighbor real quick, real quick, if you can, and just engage them in this and say, Help is on its way. Help is on its way. Mm -hmm. uh, she focused on the person breaking. I will too for a few moments, but she's got that. I'll leave it with her. Uh, but help is on its way. Let me say this the text that is lifted up by our Pastor Green is the word for the day, to which I can piggyback in on, uh, shares with us a particular story out of the book of Acts. Now, you must know the book of Acts is not just a historical book. Uh, books of the Bible were written with purposes, meaning, intentionality. And so the book of Acts is written as a historical book that denotes the acts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, what the book of Acts tries to tell you is that ministry can't be done like it needs to be done without the Holy Ghost. I wish I had it. It tries to dictate to us that if you're going to do God's bidding in the earth realm, you need to make sure the Holy Ghost is on your side. Amen. Uh, so you understand that praise and worship releases the praise to God. But God's response to your praise and worship is to release the power of the Holy Ghost in you. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. Just stay with me. And so, in the book of Acts, dictates that God, anything God is doing in the earth realm, He does it by His Spirit. He does it by the power of His Spirit. It's not good enough just to know that you're doing God's work. You've got to know that there's power involved in what you do. Amen. The Bible declares that in the days of Herod, now Herod was the, the king who it says in the days of Herod, meaning in the season when Herod was looking to dominate. Every now and then you run into a season in your life where the devil seems like he brings an overnight back and he wants to dominate your situation. You have a witness out there. Every now and then sickness comes out of nowhere. Every now and then job loss comes out of nowhere. Every now and then family grief comes out of nowhere. It's a season of error. Error is the spirit of oppression, the spirit of depression, the spirit that comes in and the race power. The Bible said in the season of error, he came to do his power against the church. Yeah. But I want you to know that Herod never read the Bible. Yeah. For the Bible declares upon this rock I build my church. Yeah. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Herod uh, said, I have a resume for beating up church folk. Uh, he said, I took James and killed him. Uh, 
Amen. Praise God. But I never encountered Peter. And his intent was to kill Peter. But the rest is with the wrong person. Get somebody out of the wrong person. Not why the wrong person? Because the Bible says that Peter, among all of Jesus' disciples, was the man God gave the keys to the kingdom. Now, you're wrestling with the wrong person, Bill. I got keys of authority. I got keys that says whatever I bind here on earth, God will bind it in heaven. Do I have a witness in here? You got to know you got authority and the key is in your mouth. I wish I had three phrases in here. The key is in your mouth. You can be silent all you want. You can have quiet church if that's what you want. But I come to enter into his dance with some thanksgiving. Because the key is in my mouth. Go ahead and praise him on every road. Peter ain't worried, and I got evidence to prove it. Peter is not having a panic attack, and I got evidence to prove it. Peter is not going through emotions, and I got evidence to prove it. How do I know? The Bible says Peter would rise up by itself. Yeah, the Bible says he goes to sleep in the prison. I mean, I wonder if you don't have anybody in here that can give Jesus your word. Jesus, your place, huh? Give Jesus your problems, huh? Give Jesus. He said, if Jesus is going to happen, I can go to sleep and get up. Do I have a praise on every road? Huh? What the Holy Ghost is trying to get you to do huh? is get to the point in your life where you stop worrying and stop complaining. Huh? The Bible said that the king knew huh? that Peter had some kind of power. How do I know? The Bible said he took him uh, and he brought him. Uh, him up between two persons, uh, between two guards, uh, uh huh, and chained him to two guards. Uh, now, watch the text, watch the movement in the text. Uh, he would have been better off because uh, if he had known scripture, uh, he should know that, amen, one should chase a thousand, uh, but two for ten thousand of flight. Uh, and when you put him aside, too, uh, the power of agreement goes over. I wish I had a praise I here. Not everybody is chained to something means uh, that the something has more power than you. Uh, the Bible declares that he was chained uh, uh, to a guard, uh, a spirit whose job uh, was to make sure he does not break through. Uh, but no matter what you're chained to, uh, some folks are chained to depression. Uh, chained, uh, Lord have mercy, the Bible won't have spoken. Uh, chained to get high. Uh, Chained to water, drinking alcohol, chained to a cigarette, chained to sexuality. It don't matter what you chain to, whatever is working in there is not greater than what's working in you. I hear the Lord say, tell you, a prison break is coming. A prison break is coming. You can't come to church and remain the same. The minute you get into the house, But I come back and tell you, when church is over today, somebody's going home free. I come back and tell you, when church is done today, somebody's breaking loose. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost coming out somebody's road. Free of the last time. It's coming to your prison. How did it happen to you? Peter said, I don't know. I went to sleep in my situation. But while I was asleep, the church, I said the church, I said the church, some folk put down the church, but if there's one thing the church knows how to do is pray. Do I have some praying folk in here? Oh, stop praying. Pray without ceasing. Pray knowing that your prayer, what writer says, well, where should I pray? I'm glad you asked, I'm about to tell you. We mean preacher, they pray, and you know stuff they know is gonna happen. So it's casual prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray my soul to keep. That's casual prayer. They get up in the morning and do a casual prayer. They say, God, thank you for waking 
Sophia. Oh, I set my foot on her. My heart in the right place. Thank you, God, for giving me the tears, my lady. That's actual prayer. But then some people pray positively. Lord, have mercy. Positive prayer is when you're going to hell. And when it's she might like it, it's no break out. And it's she be a fasting. And it's she might like trouble shit right in front of you. You need a positive prayer. You need to go for this cause. Go bow my knees before you. And Lord, I lift you up in prayer. You got to go out and take your prayer to the Lord in prayer. I don't need somebody to need to see that it's positive. Shows up. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, Peter is so asleep yes. 
that when the answer shows up, yeah. the answer has to be in him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, this text, this text writes it like the Holy Ghost is standing what, right in the room with them. They're calling every. He says, he hits Peter out of slumber. Yeah. And Peter gets up out of slumber. And he never got up out of a deep sleep. Yeah. And you don't know if you're awake or still sleeping. And then and, and folk talking to you and you're not really hearing what you hear. Mm-hmm. Peter gets up out of his slumber, and the Bible says, Amen. The, the angel of the Lord said, Peter, get up! I just wake up. Get up. Mm-hmm. Let me say it again. Some folk in the church have woken up, but they have not gotten up. They're still living in the situation that holds them hostage. They're in church praising, but they have not gotten up. I hear the Holy Ghost says, it's not all the time to wake up. Oh, <laughs> 
their willingness, their willingness to stay in freedom but pray like they're bound. You can't pray for folk until you start being touched with the feelings of their friends. Sometimes God's got to put you in a mess in order for you to feel what a mess feels like. So the next time you start to pray for somebody else's mess, you pray like they have been touched by the outside of somebody else's mess. Put your hands together. 